So as a follow-up from my previous video covering how to set up guides in Figma, I wanted to take a step back and think about the process I go through when I create a new design for a website mock-up. Now, one of the very first things I do is create my color palette and set up my color styles so that it creates a much easier design process as I'm working through my designs as well as seamlessly helps me transition from Figma to the web. All right, so as we take a look at a Figma file here, um, what I really like to do initially is come up to my pages. And by default, there you're going to come out with just one single page, right? And just to kind of, I don't know, maybe it's personal preference. I've seen a couple other designers do this. Um, and it's just a little bit more about organization. I like to create two different pages. One page is my working design and page two is my assets. And so I can switch back and forth um, between these so that I don't clutter up my design page with my color palette, my logos, and everything else. So. Um, I jump into my assets page and on this page I'm going to create the color palette, lay it out visually, and then use those colors to create those global color styles that I can use throughout my Figma design. All right, so the very first thing I do is go ahead and hit F on your keyboard and just draw out a frame so that we can start to lay out uh, the color palette for our design and our file. Um, now, personally for me, I do, again, this is a very much a personal preference. You can do whatever shape you desire. Um, I always like to create circles um, for the different colors on my website. And what I'm gonna have is a primary color, I'm gonna have a secondary color, and then I'm gonna have my neutrals. And so I'm just gonna use uh, uh, my own personal brand colors just as a, an example to make it easier and how we set this up and, and for you to visualize. So um, this first fill is going to be F15A26. And then the second one is going to be 3FA9F5. All right, and so what I do in order to expand on this color palette is I use a website called Make Tints and Shades. So if you go to maketintsandshades.com, um, all you have to do is enter a hex code. So I say F15A26 and say Make Tints and Shades. And automatically it's gonna generate um, 10 tints and 10 shades for you. Um, that way you can then pull from these and say, okay, I know I want a darker variation of my primary color, so let's go ahead and push and hold Option and Shift and drag our palette, uh, our primary color over to duplicate it. And then we're gonna paste in the hex code for the darker orange color. Now we can go ahead and do that again. Um, and we can actually, once you've done it once, you can hit Command D and it'll keep duplicating that same shape or action you just performed um, as many times as you wish. So I'll create it um, just two more times here so I don't wanna have that many different colors to my palette. Um, now I know I also want a very light color so if you click on the shade of choice um, we can go ahead and paste that in there. And then now we kind of want a middle tone. So let's go with this one, might look pretty good. All right, so now we've got our primary colors with the tint and shade variations. We can go in and do the same with our secondary. Are you looking to improve your design consistency and design skills in general overall? Then I put together a five day email series course that's made just for you. Check out the link in my description to get started. All right, so if we come back to our tint and shade generator, we go ahead and enter the uh, blue secondary color that we're going to use, 3FA, 9F5, and say make tints and shades. 
So now we can go ahead and select a darker hue. Um, at first we'll go ahead and you know, hit Option and Shift to drag and drop a new circle. Hit Command D two more times to duplicate that again. We'll insert the fill hex color on the dark one. We'll come over and grab our light color, copy and paste that fill. And then we'll go ahead and add a middle option there. All right, so we've got our primary and secondary. Now we want to insert our uh, neutral sort of whites to blacks that we want to utilize. So if we come back to our tints and shade generator, we can insert 000000, 000 for black. Now, of course, since black is as dark as get, the shades are just going to be all black and the tints are going to go from white all the way to black. Now, for me, I usually like to see some more options in between these variations instead of just only like 10 colors to go from white to black. It's a little bit too abrupt. I want to see a more gradual approach. So if you can grab the middle hue here at 808080 and paste that in. Now we've got ourselves actually 20 options to go from white to black because we've got 808080 to white and 808080 to black. And so um, this gives us a just a wider range of hues to choose from. So first we'll go ahead and go with E6, E6, E6. We'll paste that in. And then we'll go ahead and again, shift and option at the same time, command D to duplicate a few more times. I'm gonna go grab, um, let's say C0. That looks pretty good. Um, and then we'll go 999. And then we'll go maybe all sixes. And then we'll go um, just before black for our darker, darkest option. All right, so there we have it. We've created our color palette. We've got our primary with the tints and shade. We've got our secondary with tints and shades, and then we've got our neutrals. Now, here is where the setup is involved with being able to save these color swatches as global styles so that as you're designing in Figma, you can pick and choose them and implement them into your design so that later on, if you decide, hey, this primary color is not passing accessibility or I wanna try something new, um, you can change it once and everywhere across your design that you chose that swatch, uh, it will update accordingly. So how we do that is by creating a color styles. So what we'll do first is select our very first primary color. And if we come to our panel here on the right, under the fill, select the four little dots there. And at the top of your pop-out panel, there's a plus sign. It says new style or variable. We're gonna select that plus sign. And so what we're gonna say is we need to give this a name. As I've been referencing it, this is our primary color. Um, you can feel free to insert a description. I normally just leave that blank because I don't need, personally need a description for myself. I know what primary means. Um, so give it a name and then say create style. So now you'll see as we select that swatch, it's utilizing our primary color swatch. If we go to our second one, it's now back to just the default hex code because we haven't set up a style for this. So what we'll do in kind of the naming convention that I usually go to, um, again, naming things is a little bit tricky. Always just utilize something that you're going to easily remember because you don't wanna be trying to design, uh, confusing yourself about which swatches mean what. So we'll select the second option, click those four dots, the plus sign, and we'll say primary light. Say create style. Now choose the next one, four dots, plus sign, and I'm gonna say primary extra light. 
create style. All right, and then the dark version, we're gonna say primary dark. All right, so let's go ahead and do this for the remainder of all of our color swatches here. We'll come to our secondary color, hit those four dots, hit plus, we'll say secondary. Choose the next swatch, hit the four dots, then the plus, we'll say secondary light. Do it once again, secondary extra light. And once more, secondary dark. All right, now we'll do the same last for our neutrals. I'm gonna say extra light gray. And then it's going to be light gray for this one. Our middle one is just going to be gray. This one's going to be dark gray. And our last one is going to be extra dark gray. All right, perfect. So um, you can see now on our local styles panel here on the right, we've got our entire color palette set up as color styles. So now when we go ahead and jump into our design page, we jump into assets, pages, and go over to working design. We'll go ahead and create a new frame and say, um, you know, we're creating a button and here's the button and the background. I want it to be secondary dark color. And then the text, We'll say um, switch these up. Uh, you know the text in here. We can say I want this color to be secondary extra light. So this is our really light blue. And so then we can duplicate this, and we can say um, this button I want as a the primary color, um, and then. Say I'm also creating a card style where we've maybe got an image here at the top um, that will just put a, a dark gray fill um, and then some text and also a button holding option allows me to duplicate that button. All right, and then Let's just, for the fun of it, go ahead and duplicate another button over here. So say we get our design done and we say, you know what, this dark blue button um, just isn't working out. We can come in to our secondary dark color, click the edit style, and click the little swatch. And now what we can do is change this color to whatever we want it to be and you can see that color is changing automatically on all those buttons that that global style color was applied to. So now we can edit it and say you know what? I really want it to be even darker. Um, so we chose a even darker blue and there you have it. Now with those global color styles we're able to really create a design that's more cohesive and streamline our processes so that our color styles are easier to manage. All right, so that was really a quick crash course on how you can create your global color styles in Figma to really help speed up your design process and transition that workflow from Figma into the web. Keep an eye out for more Figma videos to come soon.